Just stop, stop, stop. Today's title is Stop Ignoring Your Role in Toxic Relationships. I see so many people talking about that they've been in these bad relationships and how bad people are for treating them in such a way. I seldom hear those people talk about the role that they played in it. So today I'm going to address that. I have also been one of those people who complained about how I was treated, but it took me hearing someone say that I had to look at my role in it, and that hurt. I mean, it was a sting. Like, what do you mean? I mean, I was indignant when I heard that on um, somebody's video. What do you mean I have to look at my role? You know, you're just taking the blame away from that person. They're toxic. They need to change. They need to do this, and I'm not trying to minimize that there are toxic people in this world but what I'm saying is is if you feel that you continue to find yourself in these relationships everyone you date is some um, someone that's beating on you or they're um, uh, some type of addiction that they have every friend you have is doing you dirty why is it that you keep getting these same relationships and that's because you have not looked at the role that you play I'm telling you it's hard it's tight but it's right so if that sounds like you, I tell you, even though you might be cringing inside, your stomach may be doing backflips because you don't want to look at your role, just sit tight. This may help you as it helped me. Like I said, it's not going to be easy. I'm not selling you a lie. So one of the reasons that we continue to stay in toxic relationships is because of accepting poor treatment. I'm going to say it again, accepting poor treatment. What I mean by that is making excuses for people's bad behavior. I've heard it all and I've said it all. So I'm talking to myself too, saying that, oh, people are a good person, you know, other than the way they're treating me now, they do a lot of good things. Excuse me, good people are not going to continue to walk over you. Good people are not going to continue to try to control you, dismiss your feelings, just try to enforce their will upon you. Good people are not going to keep borrowing money from you and never paying you back. What is the, um, what is your definition of good? If you have that, if you think that those things are good, then there's something wrong with your definition and you might need to Google what it means to be good. And I'm not saying that to be me, but we need to hear the, the harshness of it because if not, it's like we just keep living in this fairy tale. Oh, poor me. What was me? Oh, I'm a victim. No, you're not a victim, but you played a role. And if you can identify the role you play, you can stop it and begin to do better. But as long as you keep ignoring your role in that relationship, you're going to continue to have the same problems over again. So yeah, these are not good people who, who are doing these horrible things to you. Um, also, um, we sometimes say that those um, pe toxic people, oh, they're just misunderstood. If only people can understand them where they're coming from, it's going to be better. No, stop making these excuses for these people. I've even had people tell me, oh, so-and-so had a hard upbringing. They were beat as a child. This is why they're doing this. I don't care about the way somebody had a hard upbringing. If they were beat by a child, that does not give them the go-ahead to treat you dirty and to... Um, be disrespectful to you. Those same people who are trying to tell you, oh, that person had a hard life, I bet you they are not allowing people to treat them like doormats, and then they're, they're not staying in these crazy relationships, but they want you to be a fool, but when you look at their life, they're not being punked, they're not being stepped on by other people, but it's okay for you to be stepped on, no. So if anybody's telling you these reasons why you should stay in a relationship, I would say stay far away from them because they're aiding in that abuse that's going on. And again, you should have the um, the ability to think for yourself. This is what I mean about you. your role is that you can say for yourself, this does not feel good. This is not what I want in my life. I feel I deserve better and then be able to move on. Another reason people um, ignore the role they play in toxic relationships is by giving too many chances. You you better be like baseball. You do me wrong one time, I'm, I might not say anything, but the second time, I'm like, huh, what's going on with this person? That's the time to speak up. The second the second time, third time, speak up, and that way you can you got proof saying, oh, you did this to me, and the person, the toxic person may be like, well, no, I didn't. What do you mean? And you can say, look, you did this. 
then you did that and now you're doing this this is what it is and then if they're not uh, respecting you you have to know that this person does not care about you and that they're just trying to manipulate you minimizing the role that they're playing in and you need to walk away what is up with this and i have done this myself staying in these bad relationships romantic or friendships or even with bad bosses for year upon year you're crying yourself to sleep you're having anxiety attacks you're feeling depressed and then but the thing is you have the ability to walk away from those relationships now i do understand um with domestic violence it is a little bit different because you you're going to need the police you might need a domestic violence shelter um you might need to call a hotline because when you leave that person could actually kill you because um the chances of being killed are much higher once a um, person leaves a domestic violence relationship so i'm not minimizing that so it's things that you can do but what i'm saying is even with dv we still have to look at the role that we play to get ourselves in these relationships you know, so there's a way for you to leave. It's not it's not acceptable to be like, yeah, I've been treated like this for five years, sweetie. You've been treated like this for a year, even um, a whole month or two. Th that says more about you than it says about that person. What about you does not love yourself enough to get out of that relationship? What about you feels that it's okay for you to stay in that relationship? Who in your life hurt you as a child and did not take care of you and show you the nurture? um to give you the nurturing that you need didn't care about your emotions to the fact that you are now you know saying get, making excuses why it's okay for people to treat you like crap that's not about them that is about you so instead of pointing a finger at them you need to look at the fingers that's pointing back at you while you're pointing you got three fingers pointing back at you saying why am i not loving myself enough to get out of this type of romantic relationship or friendship one two three strikes you out go with the baseball thing also uh we ignore the red flags i would have women tell me you know i don't know what's the matter i never saw anything until we got married or until we moved in I'm going to say to me, I think that's just a small chance that that really happens. I believe people show us soon who they are because they want to see if we're going to continue to put up with their crap. So, like, for instance, someone was telling me they didn't know what was going on with their um, with their husband, what's going on with him, why is he crazy. As soon as I met him, I could look at his eyes. I know some people, I don't know, where it really doesn't matter what you think about this, but there's a thing to me called crazy eyes. You, well, I can look at somebody's eyes and see something is off mentally with this person. And every time I've had that thought by looking at somebody's eyes, it has been on point, never never failed me and when i saw her um husband he had crazy eyes and i'm like dude okay she didn't see the, the crazy eyes i saw that it, uh, one second of meeting him and she's claiming he didn't go crazy into years and started drinking excessively no the lies so we tell ourselves that because we don't want to um put put the spotlight on ourselves because it hurts too much. Well, sometimes you got to feel that hurt in order to get a better life. Be Like I said, because you continue to look at that other person and try to analyze that person. What's wrong with this person? This person should be different. This is so rude. This is so mean. No one should behave like that. That's naive, sweetie. You're naive. And this is why you continue to get in these relationships. And I say it to myself as well. It does not matter what you think the how, how the world should be, how you think people should be. None of that matters. All that matters is what is. This person is showing you who they are. You need to believe it. I don't care about your ideals and um, everyone should treat each other with love. Grow up. It's not happening. Oh, everyone should treat each other with respect. Stop. Stop ignoring your role. Shake yourself, slap yourself, whatever you need, grow up. That's not happening. And you've seen it over and over and over again. This is not the first toxic relationship you've been in. It's been happening to you probably your whole life. What about you continue to bring this into your life? Also, we um, the reasons why we accept this poor treatment, 
uh, we are waiting too long to confront. Like I said, waiting five months, three, three months, a year. Oh, you know, by the way, a year ago you did this and six months ago you did this. No, you need to start confronting stuff. Like I said, about the second or third time confronting it, not just letting things go by and then you want to go off and explode on someone because they've been treating you like crap for a whole year and now you now you you're all of a sudden mad now they're looking at you crazy because they're like oh i thought you liked being a um naive doormat you know but then turns out no you don't so confront sooner also a way to stop ignoring your role in toxic relationships and stop thinking that you can change people I know when I used to go to Sunday church, I would hear people say, oh my goodness, did you just hear that message pastor preach? Oh, that was for my friend. She should have been here. Oh, too bad she wasn't here. She needed to hear that. And I would hear that a lot and I started thinking, well, wait a minute. If that person really needed to hear that message, they would get the CD, the audio, and somehow they would get it. But guess what? They're not here. So perhaps they didn't need to hear it. Perhaps you needed to hear it. And that's the thing. We want to send videos to other people trying to get them to understand to change like oh this is your problem you need to change you know if you got the video perhaps that video was for you meaning that you need to change if you got the sermon or that message that message was for you it wasn't for your friend so that's the thing we got to look at our ourselves um, why would somebody want to change if they're getting all these benefits from you they're getting a huge rush to their ego because you're letting them walk all over you you're not standing up for yourself you're probably giving them rise uh moving their furniture they can call you in the middle of the night you're babysitting your kids you're doing all kind of stuff you're just a flunky that they go to because other people, you know, aren't going for it. And then so um, it's okay with you. But you, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I thought someone was wrong with my video. But yeah, so why would they change? Everything is okay with them. You're the one that has the problem. It's not them with the problem. They're trying to get the most they can get out of life. And I know you're going to say, well, that's me. I'm not saying it's right, but it is what it is. That's what they're doing. People try to get the most of what, what they can do. The thing is, you have to have a boundary to say, this is where this is good for me. This is not good for me. And so you find people that want to respect and live within your boundaries. You create your own world. And, people and another reason you can't change that person is because that person really, especially with narcissists, if you're their victim, they're looking at you like you're beneath them, that um, you're dumb, you know, you're naive, you're not, you're not really that smart. That's how they see you. So how are you going to change people who feel that they're superior to you and that you're just somebody who is like a poor little peasant that's to be there at their servant their service and um whenever they ever they need some type of whatever you're the one that they go to for it so no they're not going to change you again must change yourself uh also if you only you sometimes we think Maybe these people don't, these types of people, they don't understand us. Maybe we just need to rephrase it. Maybe somebody else just need to say it and they'll hear it. You know, um, may, maybe, you know, they just don't get it. Something about them, their upbringing, they're not understanding me, sweetie. They understand you. They just decided that this is their world. They're going to do what they want to do. They're going to treat you how they want to treat you. And it's okay for them because you keep coming back for more. Like I said, it may be a little bit different for domestic violence relationships, but anybody that's a parent of yours, sibling, any type of family or a type of friends, you are a grown person who is able to walk away from that. If you can you to come back year after year day after day to somebody who's treating you in a way you don't want to be treated you have signed on to play that role it's like a movie and whoever is treating you dirty they are the star of that role and you're the person on the sideline you know who, who's just there for some type of uh, ego relief or whatever you call it comic relief you know the, you're playing a part in their their movie and you have decided to be the flunky in this movie these people have not made you be this this is what you are and you keep coming back for more and for more which again says a lot about you and not about that toxic person also sometimes um how we ignore our role in toxic relationship is with guilt we tell ourselves oh i don't want to stand up for myself i don't want to say anything because i don't want to hurt their feelings that's a bunch of baloney 
it's not about the other person. Again, it's always about you. So you have to dig deeper. When people are saying they don't want to hurt someone's feelings, what I see underneath that sometimes is fear. Having a fear of... Um, of confrontation, you know, they're scared maybe that someone will physically hurt them or emotionally hurt them. They're afraid of being abandoned. It's not about that other person. It's all about them. So anytime I start hearing somebody say, I don't want to hurt feelings, I already know that fear is at the root, root there. And there may be other things. Let me know what you think. Also, like I talked about before, just your lack of self-worth where you don't feel that you're valued. You know, um, what I would suggest is looking to someone else that you might admire, how they how they interact with other people. How do they command people treat them? Is that something that you can role model yourself? Um, ro yeah, if you can use that as a model that you can also um, begin to assert yourself more with other people. Also, so I suggest therapy to go real deep, to look at that guilt, to look at that self-worth. Usually those wounds uh, start in childhood. It's not something that you just got recently. So you're going to need to go deep, uh, to go deeper into that. And again, I'm just saying, lastly, it's just been going on. Your toxic relationship has just been going on too long for you to try to think it's going to change. I'm telling you, some some people have talked to me about, well, only if I just knew what to say to my narcissist, if I knew what words to combat them and to stand up for myself. Sweetie, that is not going to work. These people have been at this for years, meaning even as kids, they have learned how to, the art of verbal war. You have not learned that you're probably sensitive person you know you pro you're probably a kind person and that's why they um have chosen you as their victim and and i'm not saying that you're um, beneath them because you can't go to war with them i'm just saying that that's a good thing because typically they um they they have no empathy whereas you have empathy you may have morals and standards and they don't have the morals and standards you do so to think that you're about to go to war that's like going to war what is it a gun war with a knife you got the little um butter knife and they they got um all kind of max and uh, all kind of big guns and uzis and whatever if they still you know and you know they're looking at you crazy because you're not prepared for so there's nothing you can do the only thing you can do about learning about narcissism and how to build up your um, self-esteem is how to spot the red flags when you see them disrespecting you the first second time you need to leave instead of hanging around and making excuses for their bad behavior oh they're good they're this they this they do that no they're not good to you I don't care what they do to if they're a good mother, so what? They're not good to you. It, no, There is never a reason why anybody should be beating you or treating you with disrespect. So I say that again. It's all about you in the end, and you have to figure out a way to get yourself out of those relationships and to look at yourself. Now, I am offering... Uh, mentoring one-to-one -one consultations and what I do with that is talk about talk to people who are having problems like this with narcissism any kind of toxic families friendship issues and what I say is you can find that information in my description below this video so if you would like uh, you know a one-on-one -on -one consultation feel free to go ahead and contact me but what I would warn you about up front is is that I am not going to be nice I will be fair to you I will be respectful but I'm also going to have you to look at yourself I'm not going to talk to people about changing someone else how what can they say to make someone else do something I'm not going to talk about why someone is treating them the way they are. I don't know that person. The only thing I can do is get to know you. So again, uh, thank you for watching this video. Please like, please share, and subscribe. And thank you for watching. Tell